Houston Airlines Diamond Head Classic. It's a third place game at the campus of the University of Hawaii. The University of Tulsa and the Golden Hurricane battle the Redbirds from Illinois State at the Stan Sheriff Center. Both these teams hoping to head back to the mainland at 2-1 and one in this talented field at the 2016, the 8th Annual Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Along with Dino Gaudio, Roxy Bernstein with you, and Merry Christmas. And you can see a beautiful Christmas day at Waikiki Beach. A look out at Diamond Head. Here's the results so far in this field. Still to come, the championship game at 8 Eastern right here on ESPN2 between San Diego State and the University of San Francisco. And Dino, these two teams are no stranger to one another. About two and a half weeks ago, they battled in a tight ball game, and Tulsa won on their home floor. Roxy, yes, just 18 days ago, and Tulsa dominated the points in the paint, led by junior E2 and Will Magney. E2, 15 points, 6 for 8 from the field. How about the freshman Magne from Australia? 10 points, 13 boards, 6 of which were offensive rebounds. They doubled up Illinois State in the lane, 36 to 18. And then Illinois State, although they had some good looks, According to the coaching staff, they struggled to shoot the ball. Only 39% from the field, but uh, hoping for better shooting on the island. And a controversial ending to that game in Tulsa as Illinois State led by as many as 14 points in the second half of that game. Dan Muller whistled for a technical foul late. That helped Tulsa to the win. Home whites, Illinois State, the designated home team. Tulsa in the black. And a strip of the ball, and it goes out of bounds. It stays with the Redbirds. Roxy Parrish Lee from Illinois State came in as one of the most productive guards in the country. He's been quiet thus far in this tournament. He needs to establish himself. The guy taking the basketball out of bounds right now for the Redbirds. Only had nine points in the semifinal loss to USF on Friday night. It, it, there's 11 guys leading, leading this tournament in scoring. He's not one of them. Tony Wills from the corner. Missed a three but kept alive by Phil Fain and a reset for the Redbirds. Deontay Hawkins moves into the pull-up, and the Redbirds are on the board first. I'll tell you, when I was coaching, I'd always ask my assistants, how is the warm-up? Are they ready to go? I'll tell you what, Illinois State really got after it in a warm-up. You know what, I think, coming off that loss, a little hate in their heart in this game right here. Can you really tell much from uh, the warm-ups? No, no question. Whether those guys are going hard, they're talking, they're energized, absolutely. Kyle McIntosh on the break. Harris Lee for three. And the rebound run down by Sterling Taplin. Here comes Tulsa. Golden Hurricane at six and five. As a three off the mark from Lawson Carita. Illinois State at seven and four. Ken Mahler said in that first game, the speed of the Tulsa guards really bothered them. Tulsa out of the American Conference. The Missouri Valley. For Illinois State, as a trap in the corner, McIntosh does get it out to Lee. Lee gets to the basket and finishes with a right hand, and he's a lefty. And there's the guy we've been talking about. I tell you, th this guy right here, Roxy, one of the best point guards in the country that a lot of people haven't heard about. The senior from Maywood, Illinois. Carita from the corner. Good box out and the rebound cleared by Paris Lee for Illinois State. Phil Fain goes to the basket as a shot sent back by Will Magnay, the freshman from Brisbane, Australia. Good defensive play. He's been really impactful from day one for Tulsa. His first start, actually, with the Golden Hurricane was against Illinois State in that game in Tulsa. Magne, a physical rebound. And then Mikhail McIntosh clears and looks to lead the break. Lee at three. Seven zip, Illinois State. There's the guy we've been talking about. He came ready to play this morning. And there's that good start you alluded to. Yes. Or this afternoon, I should say. Depends on what time zone you're talking about. <laughs> Lee knocks it free, recovered. Jalil Wheeler for the Golden Hurricane. Taplin has his shot blocked by Mikhail McIntosh. Boy, always the passer's fault. And a sideline violation, Illinois State with the turnover. Well, what I like about Paris Lee, Roxy, 
This is the most aggressive I've seen him early. The drive, you mentioned he's, he's left-handed with off the right hand. And then terrific preparation before the ball got there on the three-point shot. So you need him to be aggressive. He he has been. You think that's a conversation that Dan Muller had with no Harris question. Lee about being more aggressive? I, I, I really think so. I really think so. I mean, he's the engine that makes this team run. If he's not energized, then they won't be collectively. Pat Burt throws it away. And Tulsa, a rough start as the Golden Hurricane are 0-5 from the field. And that's their second turnover. Frank Haith in his third year at Tulsa. He's had 820 win seasons. This is his 13th year as a college head coach. Seven years at the U with Miami and also three years at Mizzou. He's national coach of the year in 2012 with Missouri. Led him to a 30 win season. Ten new players. They've improved dramatically from the beginning of the season, but one of the younger teams in the country. Good sign for Illinois State. Tony Wills with a bucket. He was 0-7 for the field in the semifinal loss to USF on Friday. Illinois State has scored the first nine. Corey Henderson Jr. is in, a junior from Dallas. can hear Illinois State the talking the energy levels clearly there offensive foul legal screen and it's on TK Idogi <laughs> tremendous start for Illinois State in the third place game of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic they're up nine zip on Tulsa Mela Kaliki Maka is a thing to say on a bright <laughs> you got it Christmas day. Well, we're coming to you from the land where palm trees sway. Beautiful Christmas day in the Hawaiian Islands. We're on the island of Oahu. There is Diamond Head. Off in the distance, along with former ACC coach Dino Gaudio, Roxy Bernstein with you in a hot start for Illinois State in this third place game. Dino, happy holidays first off. Happy Hanukkah, Roxy. Yes, thank you very much. But Illinois State right now, Dan Muller's team is off to a tremendous start. What do you see? Well, you're seeing a big difference in speed and quickness, and Illinois State has it. They've been the aggressor. Tulsa playing on their heels defensively. They don't have a field goal right now. And they only had one good look, Roxy. Magne on the interior. And Tulsa needs to be careful. 23 turnovers against San Diego State. Three of them already in this one, and we haven't played five minutes. And there's double motivation for Illinois State. Coming off a loss to USF here on Friday in the semifinals. And they've already lost to Tulsa once this year. as DJ Clayton down the lane. Like we talked about, no question who the aggressor is in this one early, and it's Illinois State. They've scored the first 11. Well, you know, we talked about it. In that first game, there was some controversy, the technical at the end. So I think Illinois State has a little grudge. They're playing with the chip on their shoulder in this one. Keyshawn Evans in for Illinois State, a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. So is David Njai, this seven-foot sophomore from Senegal. He blocks that shot. It'll stay with Tulsa out of bounds. With two on the shot clock. And they've been really aggressive off the bounce. Nice curl into the lane. No help side defense right there. And Clayton, I love it. Yeah, I love it. He took it with authority, finished strong at the cup. Travis Atson in a freshman from Brooklyn for Tulsa. Long desperation three with a shot clock winding down as Corey Anderson Jr. the miss. And Illinois State with the rebound. And Tulsa has gone five minutes now to start the game without scoring. Well, the first thing they need to do is establish themselves on the defensive side of the ball. Martin Zikbanu in for Tulsa, the freshman from Lagos, Nigeria. Kyle McIntosh moves in. Finds Clayton, has his shot blocked by Travis Atson. Shot clock at three. McIntosh, step back three. Loose and a whistle underneath. And there's a foul called against Tulsa. Well, that's one of the things David Njai brings to the to this team, Roxy. Seven offensive rebounds in the tournament, sitting at second, uh, second in the tournament, and he leads this field in block shots, so, but he brings offensive rebounding to Illinois State. And Dino, he was a significant presence in their opening game here on Thursday against the University of Hawaii with five block shots. That was his first action of the year. The lob, Njai, the flush. That's where he does his work, defensively, Providing resistance at the rim offensively, finishing at the rim. Delay of game warning to Illinois State. 
but it's 13 zip Redbirds. And Njai, who missed the first nine games of the year because of a stress fracture, significant presence inside for Illinois State. Boy, what a great pass right there. You or I might have been able to put that one in. I on a step ladder, that. but we'd have been able or to put that maybe one in. Maybe me on your shoulders. Yes. But a terrific delivery on the pass. Where's Tulsa going to get some offense from? Joseph Battle. And a tie-up, it stays with the Golden Hurricane at 12 to shoot. Boy, McIntosh was in perfect position defensively. Like, they guard the lane, Illinois State, and sometimes you don't have to help and recover. Just your initial positioning is your help, and that's exactly where McIntosh was. And a steal by Evans. Illinois State doing everything right in the first six-plus minutes of this game. Tosh open. 16 nothing Redbirds. Wonderful dribble penetration. McIntosh made it to the corner for the drift pass. Boy, Illinois State come out on fire. Sterling Taplin and a foul called on the drive against Illinois State. Keep in mind the Redbirds had a 14 point lead at Tulsa the second half and lost that game. Well, nothing hurts your defense more than dribble penetration. It collapses it. A wonderful find. You got to make it to that ball, uh, the offside corner for that drift pass he did. And McIntosh, terrific preparation before the ball got there for him. Open is Joseph Battle. And Telsa's finally on the board. They break the seal. It took him 6.45 to do it. And Roxy, the reason he was open, Illinois State goes 2-3 baseline. And then when the ball's inbounded, they rotate and find men. They miss Battle on the uh, transition out of the 2-3 into man-to-man -man defense. Freshman Brent, or Madison Williams, rather, in the game for the Redbirds. And we're going the other way. It's an offensive foul. And McIntosh called for his first. Yeah, see, they come out 2-3 zone. McIntosh helps on the dribble penetration. But what they try to do is let's go zone, and then when the ball's inbounded, everybody find a guy. They were a little bit late on the transition right there. Junior E2 to the basket, and he's hammered. Roxy, when, when you're struggling offensively like this, you, you got to find a guy that you can go to. And for Tulsa, it's Junior E2. Nice strong take. The transfer from Rutgers is averaging 11 points, six and a half rebounds a game. 67% foul shoot at 18 in the semis against San Diego State. And that was a tight ball game, and down the stretch, the Aztecs took that one over, Dino, as it was a 52 all game. And then San Diego State closed that game on a 32-11 run. They hit seven out of 10 threes to finish that contest. When it was 52 all, their next 10 shots were all three-point shots. And like you mentioned, they knocked down seven of them. And that's something you don't normally see from Steve Fisher's Aztecs. It, 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 exactly. Ten straight threes. Maybe out of San Francisco, who we're going to see a little bit later. USF, SDSU, the All-California Championship game in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. As a foul, will put Deontay Hawkins at the line. It's on Junior E2. His first. Hawkins struggled in the game on December 7th at Tulsa. Only 3 for 15 from the field. Uh, it's one of the reasons why they came out of there shooting 39% and thus the loss. Coming off his fourth career double-double against USF. One more for Hawkins. 72% foul shooter. Making his 60th career start today is Frank Hayne. The Tulsa coach looking on. And a frustrating start for his Golden Hurricane here. Now, he, he has to get a great shot for his team on the offensive end of the floor, whether it's a post-up, whether it's an isolation for Junior E2. Illinois State come out, punch them right in the nose, see if they respond right here. Yeah. 
Shot clock at 10. Too strong from Junior E2, rather from Martins Igbanu. Excellent ball screen defense by Illinois State. Harris Lee driving, and the rebound, and Tulsa looks to push it. Jalil Wheeler leads the break. Corey Henderson Jr. missing a three. Offensive rebound. Igbanu misses inside, and it's cleared by Deontay Hawkins you know what, Roxy, for Illinois State. Roxy, two good looks. Four on two, open three, second shot at the rim. They just can't finish early. Tulsa just one of 11 from the floor. Phil Fain. Tony Wills off on the three, and it goes over the top of the backboard. Out of bounds to Tulsa. Illinois State, the big lead early on Tulsa, and we told you this is the second meeting between these two teams. We'll check on that previous matchup about two and a half weeks ago in Tulsa. Number seven, Illinois State and Tulsa met in Tulsa, and it was a tight ball game late, Dino, tied at 67, and a controversial travel call right there on Illinois State in a tie game in the final minute, and Dan Muller picked up a technical foul. Well, you know what? I, I agree with Dan Muller right there. I don't know how that ends up being a walk. And then Sterling Taplin, a terrific take out in the middle of the lane. The biggest shot of the game right there. But uh, you know what, Roxy? When you're scheduling games, and most of them are home and home, one year at Tulsa, the next year at Illinois State, I'm telling you, a big point of contention when I was doing scheduling was... What officiating crew were we going to get on the road? And I would fight like heck for a neutral crew, whether in a game like that you grab a Big Ten crew or somebody that does both conferences. But uh, that's huge. But I, 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 I agree. I think that was a poor call right there. When you were at Wake, I'm sure you had a little bit more standing <laughs> in negotiating on officials as opposed to when it, you were at Army. It, it, exactly. Breaking the press. A travel on Junior E2. Now that's a good call. It took a little bunny hop at the end of that. We went out to Gonzaga one time. Let, let, let's watch it. Watch when he catches it. Yeah, he did. No question. That's a great call. So you went to the kennel. So we go to the kennel in a big point of contention with Mark was what, what officiating crew are we going to have? So we settled on a neutral crew, which is a Big Ten crew. And we were lucky. We made some good plays, but we are fortunate to go out there and win a very close game. And they don't lose often. The Zags no. don't come up short at home very much. I, I, think, Will the foul. I think that year at the time, it was only their fourth loss in the kennel. We had a good deck, though. Alpha Rutamino, who's with the Trailblazers, is Schmidt, who's playing with the Pistons right now. Deontay Hawkins at the line. Frank Haynes still barking at our crew of Tommy Nunez, Tyler Kumpf, and Peter Gisebo. Hey, as soon as you put that hand, that's a foul automatically. I mean, I, I don't like I, I don't like the way the rule is officiated, but it's not the official's fault right now. That, that's how it's being mandated. You're just officiating the guidelines you were given no to question. and that doesn't allow for personal feelings on, yeah. on rules. Yeah, absolutely, Rocky. Roxy. Steal by Deontay Hawkins. And Phil Fane walked. And the officials aren't crazy about it either because it says absolutes. Those are difficult to call. Two more star-studded games for you. The annual NBA on Christmas Day tradition continues at 8 Eastern. The T-Wolves and the Thunder from OKC. Then we wrap it up, the battle in L.A., the Clippers and Lakers. Both games also seen on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN. Earlier, Kyrie Irving hit the game-winning shot in a rematch of the finals. And the Cavs over the Warriors. Curtin. Wasn't happy about that one. No, no, I know. I know. You came in. Your, your, your head was down a little bit. I felt that Kevin Durant was fouled there at the end. He was here to get tripped by Richard Jefferson. Just my feeling. Well, how about Steph with only 11 field goal attempts, 15 points? DJ Clayton, the Oakland native, with the basket, and it's now a 21-4 lead, and Lee steals the inbound. Oh, 
possible. Boy, I like what I see out of Paris Lee on both sides of the basketball this afternoon. Really nice pass. When you attack the zone, get the ball in the middle of the floor. High low and another turnover for Tulsa. Tony Wills to the basket. Timeout Tulsa as the Golden Hurricane have turned the ball over eight times. They're one of 12 from the field and a huge lead for Illinois State, the third place game of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. A look at the tournament's namesake. There is Diamond Head just off of Waikiki Beach. Along with Dino Gaudio, Roxy Bernstein with you. A sensational start for Illinois State as they're up 23-4 on Tulsa. Frank Hay really has to be frustrated right now with what he's seeing. Well, they, they absolutely are because 23 turnovers in the loss to San Diego State. You mentioned it, Roxy. Eight already in, in not even 11 minutes gone in this, this contest right here. But when they struggle, Tulsa, they turn the ball over and they're not doing what they need to do on the defensive end. It carries over, and you see that with a young team. Seven straight points for the Redbirds. Pat Burt off the inbound, and maybe that can get Tulsa going. Well, he's the one guy with significant experience, played in all 32 games last year for Tulsa with 18 starts. He's a guy in a tournament away from home who has to step up. The senior average is nine points per game off the bench. Offensive foul, Mikhail McIntosh is second. Clear push up. Well, that's twice that McIntosh has extended his arm. Now, Illinois State in that first game, fouls were a big problem. McIntosh had four, only played 26 minutes in that one, and he's going to the bench early right now. So McIntosh has to sit with the two fouls. It's Illinois State. They picked up their first road win of the year here on Thursday against Hawaii as they beat him 71-45 and held the Rainbow Warriors to just 26% shooting. But then they really struggled the second half on Friday against USF. Against the Dons, Illinois State in the second half shot just 23%. As Burt again, that's a miss. And the rebound run down here comes Paris Lee for the Redbirds. Lee banks it in straight on. Not sure if he meant to do uh, that. But you know what? That, that guard gets to the lane. And another steal off the 2 2 1 press for Illinois State. DJ Clayton. Keyshawn Evans in the corner. Clayton skies for the rebound. Had it taken away by Burke, but a foul. And it's on Pat Burke, his first. Roxy, when you see press, fake a pass to make a pass. If you pass fake, five guys will move with the fake. Right now, it's also just telegraphing their passes. Tulsa, 2-3 zone on baseline out of bounds. DJ Clayton, the lead in. Phil Fain can't get the follow and a physical rebound by Will Magday for the Golden Hurricane. Jaleel Wheeler on the drive is fouled. When I see Jaleel Wheeler, I see a lot of James Harden. Wow, wow, I like it. Second on Keyshawn Evans, but the lefty, the way he's able to Good hesitation. Use his body and the angles, his ability to draw fouls. Well, th this kid really scored the ball at, at, in, at the junior college level, 22 points a game. Has the beard going. <laughs> the hair is, looks a little similar. And a three knocked in by Junior Itu. Well, you, you got to guard him out there, 41% from behind a three-point line. The thing with him is he just needs to be a little more consistent on both sides of the ball. Harris Lee from behind the line. He has 10. There's that guy I've been looking for for two games now. Man, I was looking forward to him coming into the tournament, seeing and hearing so much about him. Boy, he's playing like first-teamer Missouri Valley right now. Clayton clears the miss. Tulsa is 3 of 16 from the field. And they are 0 of 8 inside the arc. They're 3 of 8 outside. 
Let me finish that first layup with his off hot hand and struggle with the last two, Roxy, going to his right. Junior E2 gives it away. That's now nine turnovers by Tulsa. Lee. Short of that three, but it's run down by Keyshawn Evans. It just seems like Illinois State there's more hustle and determination from them today. No, no, no question. You know what? If you're Frank Hayes, sometimes it's not about offenses and defenses. It's about energy and efficiency. And they're lacking in the energy area right now. DJ Clayton. Air balls the three. And a sideline violation. Joseph Battle. Another giveaway by the Golden Hurricane. Illinois State up 28-10 in the third place game here on Christmas Day in Honolulu. The Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic third place game from the island of Oahu. As another beautiful Christmas over here in the islands. All those great shots. Thanks to Hawaiian Airlines for make, being a big part of this event here at the University of Hawaii. And Paris Lee right now is cruising and leading Illinois State way out in front of Tulsa. Well, Roxy, the Missouri Valley Conference first teamer preseason has done it in a variety of ways. Down through the lane, off the dribble drive, in transition with the three. And he showed it all. We've seen his short game, his long game, and right here, that's his middle game, the little pull up in transition. He has been sensational in the first half of this one thus far. So Paris Lee with 10 points, and the stats just dominated by the Redbirds. They're up 18 on the scoreboard. Tulsa's just 3 of 16 for the field with 11 turnovers. And they have not hit a two point field goal yet in this game. Aaron pass from Keyshawn Evans and just the fifth turnover by Illinois State. Well, Roxy, Tulsa now has 34 turnovers, and they haven't played a game in a half yet. They're six and a half away from it, so that has been their downfall the last almost 40 minutes, this, 60 minutes this team has played. Corey Henderson, Jr. from deep. And the rebound by the freshman, Madison Williams. He was part of a terrific high school team. Both his parents, Madison Williams, playing college basketball. And he had a career high 11 in the first game over here against Hawaii. Combo guard off the bench. And you have to have the right mindset to come off the bench and play, and play well, and he does. Understands and accepts his role. And to finish, Deontay Hawkins and Illinois State has their largest lead. The press was good to Illinois State. I'm surprised why Coach Mahler has gone away from it. Well, so far today, everything's been good yeah. for Illinois State. <laughs> and Tulsa really struggling to get any semblance of a rhythm offensively. And the first point scored inside the arc for the Golden Hurricane, and it's Martins Igbanu. Illinois State now 12-2 in paints in the point where they got doubled up last game at Tulsa by the Hurricane. Hawkins steps out, in and out of the three, and the rebound by Corey Henderson, Jr. Here it comes Tulsa to the front court. Igbanu tracks. Boy, great rotation out of the double team for Illinois State. Junior E2. And the rebound again from the freshman Williams. for Tulsa. Roxy, Hawkins would have got a better look if Peter rolled quicker. Slow rollers kill you on that pick and roll. He, has, he needs to get to the baseline faster. Pat Burt in and out. And a foul going for the rebound will stay at this end. 
And it's on Deontay Hawkins, his first. Monday isn't just Boxing Day, it's Bowl Day. Three more games for you at 11 a.m. Eastern. The St. Petersburg Bowl between Miami of Ohio and Mississippi State. The Quick Lane Bowl, Maryland and B.C., both on ESPN. Then we'll wrap up the day with NC State and Vandy in the Camping World Independence Bowl at 5 on ESPN2. All three games streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. You know Boxing Day, right? Pat Burt. I'm detecting some silence, Dino. No, no, I don't. I, I... It's the day after Christmas. All right. Give me, wait a minute. It's Cal Berkeley Education. Yes. Education. The number one public university in the world. I'm All right. Okay. <laughs> so what is it? Tell me. It's uh, a holiday that goes back to the Commonwealth. And it's gifts and presents that are laid out. But Boxing Day is the day after Christmas. There's a clock issue. That's why Tommy Nunez stopped the flow of the game as Tels has crept back within 16. Illinois State is led by as many as 20. 3.36 left in the first half. Tulsa needs a push before halftime. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Verizon. Join a better network because better matters. Coming up, it'll be the championship game of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. San Diego State and the University of San Francisco Dons will meet for the championship. San Diego State, the first team, has played in the championship game twice in this event. And USF getting here behind some hot three-point shoot, including when they hit 16 and tied the tournament record against Utah here on Thursday. And Roxy, they get him in a variety of ways, off a of dribble drive, off a of ball screen action, in transition. I was thoroughly impressed with how efficient San Francisco was on the offensive end of the floor. But I'll tell you what, going up against Steve Fisher's team, one of the better defensive coaches in America, I mean, we're talking about a team that's fifth in the nation in three-point field goal percentage and fourth in three-pointers made. They've averaged 12 in the two games at the Diamond Head Tournament. Going up against a very good defensive team in San Diego State as Illinois State controls after another Tulsa miss from the outside. D.J. Clayton, and on the drive, he's fouled. And it's against Sterling Taplin of Tulsa. The big thing is knowing your personnel. Clayton, when you look at the scouting report, you see number two's in front of you. He's athletic. He's a slasher. Make him be a three-point shooter. Only 27% for Clayton behind the line. Keep him in front of you. Kyle McIntosh back in the game with his two fouls. Illinois State has led by as many as 20 already in this game. Two three zone by Tulsa. Harris Lee, the pull up, sticks the mid range. And you know what? One of the things you want to do, Roxy, is drive the gaps of his own, but give Harris Lee a lot of credit. He came into and from behind the dribbler so that he was in his field of vision. He has 12. Tulsa's only got 14. Harris Lee down two early in this one. <laughs> nice pass by Taplin. And Junior Ito drops it in. And a nice cut by Ito. So we've seen both teams on the offensive end of the floor. Guys have made themselves available for passes. Move without the basketball. Both of them did. If you're Frank Hay, Dino, what can you do to jumpstart your team? Well, Roxy, the first thing you do when you're struggling, as we see another three from deep from McIntosh, is you bark at him, right? You bring him to the bench and, and you yell at him a little bit. Second thing is, guys aren't performing like they need to. You, you, you have to sub. And maybe sometimes it's mass substitution with four and five guys. But, but here's what you have with Tulsa. They're ten new guys. They've improved dramatically from the beginning of the season. But returning minutes in the NCAA, they are 346 out of 351 teams. So this is a young group for Frank Hay. Two more star-studded games for you on the annual NBA on Christmas Day tradition. 8 o'clock Eastern, Minnesota 
and the Thunder from OKC. And wrap it up at 10.30 with the Clippers and Lakers at Staples Center. Both games can also be seen on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Ho, ho, ho. Of course, the championship game of this tournament, ESPN 2, 8 Eastern between San Diego State and the University of San Francisco in a walk called on Sterling Taplin. 12 Tulsa turnovers in the first half. That, that'll drive you nuts. That, that'll, that right there will just drive you nuts. Like ball yeah. security. D don't be surprised with the pass where your, your, your feet aren't prepared. Do your work early, feet preparation, so that when you catch it, your pivot foot's established. The floater, way short from Deontay Hawkins. You know, sometimes that floater's great, but other times you're better off going one, two step into a jump shot. Inside, it's Travis Adson for Tulsa's first points. So many of these guys see the NBA guys with the floaters. Those NBA guys need that floater because they're shooting it over seven foot and seven foot one guys. Deontay Hawkins missing a three, and Sterling Taplin looks to push it. Lawson Korea hits a three. You want, if you're Tulsa Frank Havis, just get a little momentum going into the locker room. Let's try to get a stop, score, stop before we get into the half. The 14 point game, final minute of the half. And there's a foul, and a hold is called. And it's on TK Idogi, his second of Tulsa. Coming up on the Land Rover Halftime Report, Brandon Fitzgerald and Tim Welsh in the studios. As Coach Welsh hands out some Christmas gifts and a preview of the college football playoff highlights and stats. It's all coming up on the Land Rover Halftime Report. Happy holidays to the guys back in the studio. Timmy Welsh and I used to do battle in the MAAC back east. I was not, not the Mac, but the Mac. Yeah, the Mac. You got to put the extra A in there. He was at Iona. I was at Loyola. Go Fane at the line. One more coming. Good sign for Phil Fane. Only 59% from the free throw line coming in. Active athletic rebounder. We're just looking at his frame. He just needs to get a little stronger moving forward. And the sophomore, another reason he was more attractive to... Dan Muller, aside from the skill set, is he only played one year at the J.C. level, so he's got three years to play at Illinois State. Well, Roxy, he's one of those guys that was 6'2 and had that big growth spurt, so he, he has the skill set you mentioned of a guard. So athletic and long. Stepping way out, Travis Adson clanks a three. Six-second sec six differential, game clock, shot clock for Illinois State. First half dominated by the Redbirds, looking to finish his first half strong. They've led by as many as 20 points. There's Lee. Good ball movement. Hawkins open. And rattles out. It was all the way down and popped out. A steal, Wells from midcourt. And it's 37-21, Illinois State. A tremendous first half performance from Illinois State. And the last possession for Tulsa just typified the first half for them with the turnovers. So in a first half where Illinois State sets a tone defensively, Tulsa just 31% shooting and 13 turnovers. The Redbirds up 37-21 the half on Tulsa, third place game in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Hit Classic. Land Rover Halftime Report up after these messages. Manakaliki Maka, it's a third place game at the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic in Illinois State leading Tulsa 37-21 getting ready for the start of the second half. A look at Waikiki wow. Beach and Diamond Head. It's pretty nice. The rainbow, beautiful. Doesn't get much better than that. 
doesn't get much better than being in the islands for Christmas, along with former ACC coach Dino Gaudio, Roxy Bernston with you in the first half where the story was Illinois State, their urgency in their defense dominating this game. They dominated every aspect of the first half, offensively on the backboard, and in particular defensively. Great help side defense, a lot of deflections, turning Tulsa over, shot blocking at the rim. The 2-2-1 two, two, presses we're seeing here are really effective as well. And Roxy, we're looking at a Tulsa team that in the last 60 minutes have 36 turnovers. And the other thing that Illinois State has done, Paris Lee came out aggressive. And when your point guard and leader is aggressive, your team is. And Illinois State got off just to a terrific start to this basketball game. And Tulsa got going a little bit after a rough start, but they dug themselves such a deep hole, trailing by as many as 20 points in the first half. And the other thing that Illinois State has done is what we saw right there. They contested shots. No free looks for Tulsa. And when talking to Coach Mahler before the game, he says, we got a guard without fouling. Tulsa took 24 free throw attempts, of which they made 14, which was a big difference in game one 18 days ago. Only two free throw attempts from Tulsa in the first half thus far. Second foul on the Aussie, Will Magne. But I'm seeing the energy level picked up from Tulsa here in the second half. I'm sure that was point number one that Frank Haith wanted to get across to his team. Well, you know what, Roxy? You, you know what kind of team you have and what kind of leadership you have. When at halftime, when the coaches are huddled up before they go in the locker room, who's in the locker room talking? I would tell my guys, you know what? As a coach, I can't handle all the problems. You know why? I don't know all the problems. When you guys are in the locker room by yourselves together, who's taking charge of that locker room? We're going to find out who, who the leaders are for Tulsa right here. Third foul of Mikhail McIntosh. Sometimes when you go in at halftime, would you not even say anything and just let the leaders leave that room during the break? Absolutely, unless I completely lost our, my mind, which maybe Frank has done Coach Haith in the first half here. That's the other thing that Illinois State has done very well, their ball screen defense. Shot clock inside five. Lawson Carita in the lane. And a hustle by Magne, but it's out of bounds to Illinois State. A big key for Illinois State coming in, coming into the game, Roxy, was keeping the Tulsa guards. Tapman Wheeler out of the lane off ball screen action. Thus far, they've been very successful with it. At a little issue with the seats over there, the expensive seats. Look at Clayton. He's putting the seats down. He's doing everything. A little bit of everything for him. Starting the second half is Sam Muller bringing Phil Fain off the bench here in the second half. It's Tony Wills from behind the line. Now on December 7th, Wills fouled out of that game, and he was playing really well also. Two for four from threes. Big three for him right there. A lot of foul trouble for Illinois State in that first game. Last touch by Illinois State as Tony Wills deflected it out. He tried to sell it that and hit Jaleel Wheeler on its way out. The officials didn't buy it. Dan Muller has to be pleased with what he sees from his team. Wow, terrific defense by Wills. Kept alive though by Tulsa. Pat Burke fouled on a three. He'll shoot three for the Golden Hurricane. Now, that's what Illinois State did not do in the first half. They didn't put Tulsa on the free throw line. So, Burt to the line where he's a 68% foul shooter. That might have been a foul right there on Magne. So, the body from Paris Lee got him. And Burt, who began his college career at Illinois Chicago, then went to South Plains Junior College. Had a great game coming into the tournament. His first tournament game was outstanding. Then he struggled in game two against San Diego State. Got on to a slow start to the year. Over the first seven games, Bird shot just 25% outside the yard. In the last four coming into today, 9 of 16 from three. I'm talking to Dave Ryder, the director of basketball operations. He said Bird had the same start to the season last year as well. 
He's missed the first two. It's been 20 against Stephen F. Austin on Thursday in the quarterfinals, which is a season best. As we saw, as we're seeing right here, he came on better at the end of last year. And you know what else, Roxy? He played a lot of four for this team last year. So now, with his skill set, he's a matchup nightmare at the four spot where he is right now. That's a tough cover for opposing big guys. Hawkins saves it. Harris Lee. Puts it up. The floater too strong. Shot clock violation. Tulsa basketball. I, I like with my point guards because everybody runs it. And so many guys do it at the end of the shot clock. The high ball screen. It dilutes the product, if you will. We would like to go 1-4 flat at times. And I think Paris Lee would be terrific with that because the ball screen, Roxy, brings a second defender to the dribble. He too had a shot blocked. Carita missing a three. And there's Deontay Hawkins on the glass for Illinois State. Really hard and high contest for Illinois State defensively. Tony Wills curls into the key. A great read by Tony Wills. Sometimes guys on offense just watch the ball when, in fact, the guy that's guarding you, keep your eye on him. He'll tell you what cut to make. And the cut there was a curl. Redbirds have matched their largest lead. Bird has his shot blocked. Got it back. And then it's fouled. Pat Bird to the line. The other reason it's hard to guard Illinois State on offense is they are cutting really hard. Good curl. Corrito was trailing him. That's the exact right read. So Bird back to the stripe where he's one of three. He has six along with Junior Itu to lead the Golden Hurricane. Now with seven. Uh, Paris Lee for Illinois State leads all scorers in the game with 12. Phil Fain comes back as Paris Lee gets a breather here. In game one, and he's not in there right now, but, or no, he is in there. Magny did a great job on the offensive boards. He had six by himself. Right now, Tulsa getting no second shot opportunities. Deontay Hawkins spins out, Boy. follows up his own miss. Great isolation for him. With 6'8", 220, a physical advantage for Illinois State when Hawkins has the ball. They're isolating him on that right side of the floor. Junior E2 from the corner. The struggles offensively continue as Tulsa just 25% from the field in this game. It's a foul. It's a legal screen. And it's on Keyshawn Evans of Illinois State, his third, but Deontay Hawkins asserting himself. Great isolation on the right side. A little too much strength for Burt. Man, takes it up there strong. Follows his miss. This is the eighth annual Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. The field for the ninth annual next Christmas time. And a strong field coming to Honolulu for the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic in 2017, highlighted by an undefeated USC team, Andy Enfield bringing his Trojans, here as well as Jim Laranega and the Miami Hurricanes. Some of those mid-major teams that are going to be very tough to deal with, Keith, Akron, Davidson. Yeah, Keith Dambrod at Akron and Bob McKillop at Davidson. New Mexico State always has a strong team. Utah State, outstanding field coming here in 2017 as Illinois State has matched their largest lead of the game. Third place game is Junior Itu will go to the line.
Tulsa is 0 of 6 for the field in the second half. Phil Fain called for his first foul. Terrific job offensively for Tulsa. Running Corita off the baseline. And with that dead Roxy, went right back into the screener. Corita came off that baseline. Boy, I love the post up by E2. You know why? He posted high, created an avenue for the pass from Corita. Look how high he's posting up. When you're a big guy, when you get contact with the off or defense, maintain it, and that's how you create a passing angle for the feed. E2, who sat out last year after the transfer from Rutgers from the Republic of Congo. Kyle McIntosh, well defended inside. We were very fortunate for Illinois State. That should have been a steal. So Will Wheeler almost had a run out. Bill Payne goes inside. E2 the rebound. Good take. Doesn't have the physicality to finish through contact. Illinois State ball. Roxy, one of the things that Keyshawn Evans needs to do a better job of as a point guard is it's your job to come off of the ball screen shoulder to hip with the screen. He, he has a little too much space in there where his defender could just get over and through the screen. So you need him to be tighter. Tighter. We would tell our guys, your shoulder should be on the screener's hip. That's, that's because you're low, and the lower you are, the stronger you are. Offensive foul, Deontay Hawkins trying to post up his third. Sixteenth foul already on the Redbirds. Yeah, just as long as you, if your elbow's bent, you're fine. As soon as you extend, watch him extend his right arm there. That's a great call. The other thing he needs to do is post in the green there. Post in the lane. Don't post the man, not the block. and Corita from the corner. Enjai couldn't grab it, and it's run down by Junior E2. Loose ball. Now you're seeing Tulsa come up with some more of those 50-50 balls, and they get the first half. And they're Lawson rewarded. Corita, the floater. We're seeing that energy, that hustle, that really wasn't there from Tulsa. I, I, I agree completely. Playing with more emotion and more energy. Madison Williams, a tough pull up. Jaleel Wheeler, the rebound. Nice pass by Wheeler. The lay in by Martins Igbanu and Tulsa creeping back. It's down to 14. And it was 14 point lead the last time Illinois State had these guys, and they frittered it away. Well, the lead is 14 now, and Tulsa trying to make a push. Tough shot, great run out for Tulsa. That's how you get easy baskets in transition. Next, it is the championship game of the eighth annual Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. A look at Diamond Head, and you'll get a look at two California teams battling for the championship, San Diego State and the USF Dons will go at it 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. And fans enjoying Christmas Day up there in the water. Uh, Steve Fisher, the Illinois State grad. I'm not sure Steve Fisher was as defensive-minded then as he is now with the Aztecs. Part of a Division II Final Four team for the Redbirds. And Steve Fisher will lead his Aztecs against the Dons in the championship game here in Honolulu. I thought I saw Corey Alexander and Kanoa Leahy in the water there. Is that they right? sprinted out of here. Like, well, the I, game was over. Now, they were here early this morning. In their defense, they were here at like 5.15 a.m. Hawaii time. First game 
today saw Utah defeat Stephen F. Austin in a game that tipped off at 7.30 a.m. local time. Deontay Hawkins the lay, and I'm still trying to get confirmation if Corey Alexander and Kanoa bought Malasadas for everybody this morning. <laughs> That's a full day, though. Up at 5:30 or up at 4:30, in here at 5:30. But now they got a little suntan lotion on, keeping the rays off of them a little bit. Before the shot, foul on Paris Lee, his second. And not just those guys, but how about our crew? An outstanding job all week, and they were here. Literally, the Roosters were outside, no question, when they got here this morning. Roger woke, woke the Roosters up this morning. At the line, a one and one is Tulsa in the bonus. Junior E2. Three and four at the line. Cousin of Serge Ibaka. I really Coming. like the diversity of E2's game. He can shoot the three, 12 for 29 coming in here today from behind the three point line. Has a bounce to his game, could put the ball on the floor. They may need a little more power game out of here in the final 12 minutes. He leads Tulsa with 10. And again, it's a 14-point game. Harris Lee, short, had a good look at a three, and the rebound falls to Lawson Carita for Tulsa. Freshman Carita. Step back. Planks the three and a foul going for the rebound. It's over the back. And, and you're seeing an Illinois State team right now, Roxy, on the defensive end of the floor. They, they can have five switchers. So the, the switching really makes you stagnant offensively. Kept Tulsa out on the perimeter the entire possession. Third foul, Will Magne. Just the second team foul against Tulsa here in the second half. Kyle McIntosh lost it out of bounds off of Illinois State. It's a Tulsa basketball. Illinois State leads at 46 32. Third place game in Honolulu. Mele Kalikimaka from the islands. The Hawaiian Airlines. Diamond Head. Classic. Tonight, after a full day of the NBA on ESPN, don't miss Sports Center at night with Max and the coach. Love all the highlights and breakdowns: the Ravens, Steelers, Broncos, Chiefs, plus the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Hit Classic. Sports Center at night after Clippers, Lakers on ESPN. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN. Look at Diamond Head there. And you can't think of Sports Center in Hawaii without a Neil Everett pop, right? How's it? Exactly. Hey, Tulsa now, that's far, Roxy, in nine minutes of the second half. No turnovers, and they created one for themselves right there. They're valuing the ball clearly here in the second half, although they're still struggling shooting. They're just 2 of 11 from the field here in the second half. Well, at least they're getting shot opportunities. Illinois State had 11 more attempts in the first half than Tulsa did because of Tulsa's turnovers, and there's another one you right spoke there. You yes, no soon. question. They're, they're going to blame you for that one. The broadcaster's jinx, Dean. I, I think Frank Hayes had their attention early, though. Now, this is the second time it's gone into the post of Tulsa's trap. Deontay Hawkins sticks a three. And that's great offense for Illinois State because when you see the trap, it's the second pass out of the trap that gets you the open shot. Knocked out by Hawkins. He leads Illinois State now with 14. When the ball goes into the post, Tulsa's trapping the post. There's the catch on the post. Here comes Magne. And great job by McIntosh. The kick out, the one more. That's great basketball right there. Move along the baseline. Corey Henderson Jr. misses the reverse. And it'll stay with Tulsa here in 13 to shoot. Joseph Battle comes in for Henderson. Battle, a terrific high school athlete. Last year was the Gatorade 
South Carolina Player of the Year and a Mr. Basketball average, 31 points per game. But in addition to his prowess on the floor, he was also the South Carolina Football Offensive Player of the Year. So a tremendous two-sport athlete in high school. Here comes D.J. Clayton leading a 3 on 0 Hammers one down. You have baseline out-of-bounds opportunities. That's like special teams in football. You want to score on those. Might get a run out for Illinois State. Lead back to 19. It's been as large as 20. Sterling Taplin is open. Tony Wills the rebound for the Redbirds. Foul off the ball, and it's against Sterling Taplin of Tulsa, his second. And, and a great deflection to help. Terrific help right there from D.J. Clayton. And you know what? He rewards himself with the steal, the run out, and the bucket. Clayton, who began his college career in Western Kentucky, left, went to Palm Beach State Junior College, and now a junior at Illinois State. Boy, Illinois State really locked in defensively in this game. Now, Tulsa's been man-to-man, -man, but on baseline out-of-bounds, Roxy, they go 2-3 zone, so... Great floater by Tony Wills. Great splitting of the gap by Tony Wills. Like, when you're in zone defense, you still have a man. He's in your area. It's my guy. Guy should be talking. My ball, my ball. Take the ball, keep it out of the lane. Largest lead for the Redbirds and for Wills. The season I tying 11. He had 11 against Tulsa the first time around. So he likes playing against the Golden Hurricane. Seven straight for Illinois State. Foul the drive will send Jaleel Wheeler to the line. Boy, at the beginning of the possession when Wheeler came off of that ball screen, outstanding ball screen defense. They literally pushed him near midcourt. Those big guys from Illinois State, hard hedges on ball screen action to keep Taplin and Wheeler out of the lane. First foul on Wills, Jalil Wheeler to the line, the junior from Newark, New Jersey. One more. 65% foul shooter. Is first point for Wheeler, he averages 13 a game. The leading scorer on this Tulsa team coming in. He had been quiet until knocking down those two free throws. But when you're struggling to score, you want to try to get easy ones, and you can get him at the free throw line like he just did. Harris Lee fouled in the drive, and that's the third on Sterling Taplin. You know what I like about Paris Lee? He just doesn't play the game with his body. He plays it from the shoulders up. He saw Magne was the guy that showed on the ball screen, and I loved what he did right there. Attack the big guy. Wow. Just... <laughs> Boy, Lee missed McIntosh wide open under the basket. Foul on the inbound. Magne called for his fourth. 9.22 to play. Frank Haith will get Magne out with the four fouls and bring back Martin Zigbanu. Both these teams, this is their final non-conference game before conference play opens up for both sides before New Year's. Kyle McIntosh across the key. Boy, you're seeing a physical difference between him and Pat Burt right there. Tulsa, they'll open up on New Year's Eve in the American Conference against UConn. Scoop by Taplin. What, UConn down to seven scholarship guys? They've been beat up. You just feel with Kevin Ollie and what he's going through with all the injuries. The great freshman, Altari Gilbert, hurt. Great win. Somehow they put it all together to beat Syracuse. They battled through some injuries over at the Maui Invitational. Well, Illinois State, they'll open up play in the Valley against Evansville coming up on Thursday. And a foul will put Junior Itu at the line. It's the second on Phil Fain. 
Great seal by E2, and I love the pass. It was a bounce pass. That's a feeding pass that can lead that big guy right into the shot. Junior E2, five of six of the stripe. And 18 against San Diego State on the semis on Friday. And that gives him 11 in his third place game. Really liked the diversity of his game. He's really come on in the sit-out year from Rutgers. 6'7", 230, very versatile, can shoot it, bounce it. And when he needs to be, he could be powerful with the rim. Fifty-five thirty-six Redbirds inside nine minutes to go. Madison Williams off on the pull-up jumper. There's that James Harden ability I was talking about with Wheeler. <laughs> Knows how to draw the foul. First of Madison Williams. Oh, boy, extended those arms. Got the guy in the air. Here's what's looming for the Redbirds is they'll open up play in the Missouri Valley against Evansville. Tough matchup with Indiana State and Greg Lansing's team January 7th. And they're picked to come in second in the Missouri Valley preseason poll behind Wichita State. You know what, Roxy? You got two guys on this team that are first preseason first team in the Missouri Valley. Paris Lee, Macau McIntosh. I really thought coming in, I think it's a three, right? I think they're going to give him three free throws. That's what they're checking at the monitor. Can't Tommy tell Nunez is over there with Tyler Kump. You can't tell. I think the, 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 the first angle we had was a little better, but. I, I thought coming into the season, they might have had more talent than Wichita State did. This is a veteran Illinois State team. An experienced team that has three senior starters on it. When you look at Paris Lee, Tony Wills, and Deontay Hawkins. Yeah, it is. So they're shooting three, so... Jaleel Wheeler will head the line for three free throws. Well, when Wheeler came in, when they recruited him, he wasn't much of a three-point shooter, but he's really developed that part of his game. 38% from behind the line coming in. So Illinois State does have to respect his three, but don't foul a three-point shooter. Honorable mention, junior college All-American last year, Jaleel Wheeler. They needed him to come in and score, and he has. Almost 13 a game. 15 or more in each of the last five, but only three so far in this one. Now give him four. Little 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press by Tulsa. Illinois State breaks it, but can't make him pay as Deontay Hawkins misses on the baseline. And a foul over the back. It's on D.J. Clayton of Illinois State, who looks on in disbelief. I, I don't know why Hawkins settled for the little, you know, one-handed push shot from five feet. He should attack the basket. This results in free throws for Tulsa. Well, one way they could scratch their, their way back into this game is at the free throw line. It's a good call. Tulsa's in the double bonus for the rest of the ball game as he too will shoot two. And Roxy, like we talked about on the December 7th game, Tulsa went to the free throw line 24 times. And one of the big keys for Coach Muller in this game right here was defend without fouling. Because Tulsa lived at the line 18 days ago. And Illinois State led by as many as 14 in the second half of that game in Tulsa back on December 7th. Illinois State going to make sure, at least try, to not let that happen again and blow a big lead. They need to finish off this win. And try to give them some momentum and try to get them to 8-4 before opening up Missouri Valley play. DJ Clayton. 
And a foul again. over the back again, and Tulsa will head to the foul line. And another good call. 15-point lead for the Redbirds. Tulsa trying to come back in this third-place game at Honolulu. State leading it by 15. Third place game of the Hawaiian Airlines. Diamond Head Classic along with Dino Gaudio. Roxy Bernstein with you. Championship game still to come between USF and San Diego State. But Dino, Illinois State's defense, the story as Tulsa shooting just 2 of 14 in the second half of the field and 25% for the game. Well, Roxy, like you mentioned, their defense in the second half has even been, has even been stingier than it was in the first half. Not as many turnovers. We saw one right there, but Really solid, contesting every shot. The, the press has bothered right. Tulsa. And what you love about Illinois State, active hands. Nobody's allowed to window shot for Tulsa. Distracting deflections, runouts for Illinois State. Nine steals for the Redbirds in the game. As the floater from Paris Lee. As the last foul, by the way, was called on Sterling Taplin, it was a foul on Tulsa going for the rebound, not Illinois State. Boy, Paris Lee drove so hard. You're in a retreat mode defensively, and he's able to pivot and get the shot off. The spin created space for him. His first point to the second half is Junior Itu will go back to the line, and it's the second foul on Dauda David Njai. And the parade in line in Tulsa about to shoot free throw numbers 21 and 22. Illinois State shot just six. And that was the difference in uh, the first game. In what was a close game, 14 points at the line for Tulsa. And this is exactly exactly what Illinois State doesn't want. Dempsey guys standing at the free throw line. The clock's not running. And if you're Frank Kate, you're telling your guys, let's try to get this thing to 10 points with four minutes to play so we, we can make a little run down a stretch. Is this where you really need to sell your team in segments, Dino, and not necessarily is overly concerned with the overall score? A absolutely. If he, if he can knock this down, they're down 15. So let's set up the press if we're Tulsa. Extend our defense, and they are. 1-2-1-1 one, one, one pressure. And you know what, Roxy, if Illinois State breaks the press and just pulls it out and gives Tulsa a free press, then Tulsa can just continue to extend their defense. We would say let's attack the pressure. If they're going to extend their defense 94 feet, let's go for layups and dunks. DJ Clayton missing a three. Jaleel Wheeler for Tulsa. Tulsa's gone over six minutes without a field goal. But they keep going to the foul line. Henderson from D. And Corey Henderson's first points. And it's a 12-point game. The closest Tulsa has been in a while. Like we talked about, if you're Frank Kate, hey, let's get this thing to 10 or under. And all of a sudden, we're putting game pressure on Illinois State. Kyle McIntosh missing a three. And here come the Golden Hurricane. Switching the exchanges on the perimeter. Offensive foul on Jalil Wheeler, his first. Boy. They're coming back from the free throw line, and they're coming back from behind a three-point stripe. And Illinois State, as we know, the three's the great equalizer in our game. They have to make sure they're guarding the line. Three on two if they want it. The lob. The finish, Deontay Hawkins. That's 
just what we were talking about. If they're going to extend their defense, our mindset has to be layups and dunks on the other end. Illinois State, great job of attacking with aggression. The 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press. Pull up the deep two by Carita rattles out. Tulsa second chance. Lawson Carita to the basket. And it's cleared by Mikhail McIntosh. Good decision by McIntosh. If we have an advantage, four on three or three on two, let's take it. If not, let's pull it out and run offense. Roxy, to be good offensively from an offensive perspective, you can be good if you just run the break. You can also be good if you're, you, you grind it out in a half court. But to win championships, I think you have to have a little of both. E2 tries to go coast to coast, and he's fouled. Pretty good job of attacking the pressure. Taking the ball from one side to the other. Good two on one. You, those lob passes aren't as easy as they look. It was a great delivery up in the finish. Up for the finish, and Hawkins having a really good day today. 16 points, four rebounds. Not shooting great in the field, but finishing at the rim. Just called for his fourth foul as Junior E2 continues his parade to the line. He's 11 of 12 at a strike. 17 now for E2. One more shot. He's been aggressive in attacking. Now 13 of 14 at the line for Junior E2. Game high 18, he had 18 on Friday against San Diego State. His career high is 20. Earlier this year, put up 20 against Jacksonville State. Also a 20 in a game while playing at Rutgers against Clemson in a near steal for Sterling Taplin. Boy, Will's very fortunate. A soft pass across the lane. Foul out near midcourt. And it's Pat Burt. His second. When you're trapping Roxy, don't, don't let that dribbler get to your body. It's almost like you're playing tag with him. Corral him, but don't let him get to your body. One and one for Lee as Illinois State in the bonus. Harris Lee, an 81% foul shoot. Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Week, two of the last three weeks. Missed the front end. Chance for Tulsa to cut this thing to 10 or even nine with a three. Wheeler, foul. So this is a sign of a smart team. When, when you're in the bonus, then let's put foul pressure on them by attacking the rim. And that's exactly what Tulsa's doing right now. Jaleel Wheeler back to the stripe where he's 4 of 5. 438 still to go. Well, you wrestle with yourself as a coach now if you're Dan Muller. Do we play zone to maybe keep the ball out in front of us, but then on the other side, you're afraid of threes, but right now they can't control the ball. Tulsa off the dribble drive action. Now they're going back to the baseline with their second pass. Got to be careful with that second one. Wow, he grabbed his arm. How's that not a foul? Boy, Magne with four fouls. It looked like he grabbed his arm. Tulsa ball. 59-49, so a chance to chip it down to single digits here. It was a 21-point game. Henderson from the corner. And the rebound, Paris Lee for the Redbirds. And he'll circle away from traffic. Got to be Paris Lee or McIntosh here. There's a foul off the ball, and if that's Magne, he is fouled out. This is the closest it has been since there was 15:40 left in the first half. As yeah. Illinois State jumped out to a huge lead to start the game, as it was 16 to nothing Illinois State to start it. And Magne was a big player in game one, Roxy. 10 points, 13 rebounds. 
He goes out of this one with five fouls and doesn't have a basket. But they're really high on him, the young guy from the Australian Institute of Sports in Australia, of course. Guys who went there, Andre, uh, Andrew Bogut, Matt Delavadova, Patty Mills. And even Ben Simmons played there before he went to Montverde Academy in Florida his, his last year. They've produced some great players, and that young guy right there is going to be a terrific player in the American Conference. One out of two for Fane. Tulsa's made only three field goals here in the second half. Make it four as the tip in. First points of the game for Sterling Taplin. And it's a nine point game. Tulsa trying to make a game of it. It's a nine point game with 339 remaining. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines, sponsor of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Hawaii flies with us. Outrigger Hotels and Resorts. Welcome to a world away at Outrigger Hotels and Resorts. And Verizon. Join a better network because better matters. Still to come, the championship game for the 8th annual Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic San Diego State USF battling for the championship. That's coming up next here from Honolulu on this beautiful Christmas day. Malikaliki Maka from the islands. And it's all of a sudden gotten to be a tight game here between Illinois State and Tulsa. Well, really important possession here for Dan Moller, setting up your press offense. And you know what, Roxy? With the new rule two seasons ago, they only have seven seconds to bring the ball across the midcourt line. So they have to do a really good job with press offense right here. Illinois State scored the first 16 points of the game. So this is the closest Tulsa has been since that run to start the ball game. And the key for Tulsa is there's some blood on the jersey of D.J. Clayton, which needs to be attended to before play resumes. Tulsa's made only four field goals, Dino, in the second half. It's about getting to the foul line. The Golden Hurricane are 21 of 24 from the stripe in the second It's half. amazing, and we talked about it. Was the difference in the game on December 7th at Tulsa? They shot 24 free throws. They only made 14 of them, but they were plus five at the line, and that was the difference in the game 18 days ago. I know the Tulsa and Illinois State fans are probably a little tired of me mentioning this, but that was a 14-point game, but it bears repeating. Illinois State had a big lead in the second half of that ball game. Tulsa came back and won as Taplin called for a foul, and he is fouled out. I'll tell you what, I, I, I love Paris Lee, how aggressive he is. He's attacking the top of the trap. If Taplin would have just put his foot on the midcourt line, it would have been a charge. Never picks his dribble up. I like it. And you know what else, Roxy? Look how low he is. Keeps his shoulder down, low point of gravity, which enables him to be stronger and quicker as well. Double bonus, two shots for Lee. Now we'll go two at the line. And like Illinois State has opened the door. They're missing. They're not going to the line very much, Dino, but when they do go to the line, they're leaving that door open they, for Tulsa. They really are. Apparently 81% coming in. 10-point game. Inside three and a half minutes to play. Another foul. Wave off the shot. Mikhail McIntosh whistled for his fourth. And it's Jaleel Wheeler back to the stripe. Wheeler and E2 have been so crafty, drawing fouls, getting to the line, and getting points for Tulsa with the clock stopped. Like I said, when you have that 10-point lead, you just wonder if Illinois State doesn't say, hey, let's just look at zone for a possession or two. And the reason you look at the zone is... Maybe it'll make Tulsa a little hesitant, stay on the perimeter a little more. Now, you don't want to give up threes, but right now, Tulsa just putting their head down, driving the ball to the basket. 
difficult for Illinois State to keep them off the line. One out of two for Wheeler, who's now seven of nine at the strike. Illinois State has led by as many as 21 points. Tulsa switches the ball screen. Harris Lee, foul on the drive, wave off the shot. And it's the third on Pat Bird. It'll be Paris Lee to the strike. I, I've never played soccer, but almost your defense, and I'm, a, I'm not being facetious, it almost has to be like soccer is. No hands at all. Everything's done with your feet defensively. Roxy, the new rules every two years. I, I, we could just really simplify this. Let's just do what the NBA does. We just copy them anyways. It's just an absolute on the officials. When that right hand's right in there, that, that, that right hand's on his waistline, automatic foul. Lee hits both. He now has 17 to lead Illinois State. Deontay Hawkins with 16. Now a little soft press by Illinois State. And there they go back to that 2-3. There you go, coach. Watch him hit a three now. <laughs> Well, let's see if it keeps them on the perimeter. Make them hit a shot. They haven't proven they can make shots from the field. It's all been free throws. Wheeler from way out there. Last touch by Deontay Hawkins. And with two on the shot clock, Tulsa and, gets a second chance. And, and I like what, what, what Coach Waller did right there. Let's change it up a little bit. They're hurting us with dribble drive. Let's keep them on the perimeter. That's exactly what they did. Bird. Desperation three, and it's a shot clock violation. Turnover by Tulsa, and after committing 13 turnovers in the first half, that's just their fourth in the second half. Again, the press. And a steal. Wheeler lays it in. Timeout Tulsa. Can't make that soft pass. You have to put something on that thing. And don't pass it to the offense. Pass it away from the defense. Great job by Jaleel Wheeler. So Wheeler gets his first field goal of the game with 2.11 to go. It's a nine-point game. Two more star-studded games for you on this annual NBA on Christmas Day tradition. 8 o'clock Eastern, the T-Wolves and the Thunder from OKC. Then wrap it up from the Staples Center in Los Angeles. The Clippers, the Lakers. Both games can also be seen on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. And, and, and Roxy, Illinois State is breaking the press. But when you cross the timeline, don't just pick your dribble up. Keep the ball alive, take it foul line extended, and then you have more options from which to pass. 2-11 remaining. <laughs> Illinois State's been good with their ball movement against the, keeping out of the trap. They really are. Not many steals, if any, in the backcourt. Now, the new rule, no closely guarded five count. You can just keep the ball out there and keep the defender on your hip. He's got a dribble. DJ Clayton to the basket and one. A terrific curl from Clayton. And that's what he is. He's an athletic slasher. Takes the ball right down the lane. Terrific take. You know what? I'm not sure why E2 is chasing him right there. He's not a three-point shooter. What? Really good play from Dan Muller coming out of the timeout. Clayton just a 45% free throw shooter. And he misses. And we see Illinois, despite the miss, Illinois State still going 2-2-1 two, two, back to the zone. It was good for them the last possession.
when you're E2 inside. He's tied at career high with 20. But you know what, Roxy? It was a long offensive possession for Tulsa. Two on one if Illinois State wants it. McIntosh, clobber. I like it. I like him being aggressive. Two on one opportunity. Opportunity to take advantage of it. If I could say the word opportunity. Second foul in junior E2. And it's Mikhail McIntosh, 77% free throw shooter. His first trip to the line today, shooting a pair. 5th leading scorer in this tournament at 14 and a half per game. At 20 and 12 in the semis against USF on Friday as a timeout taken by the Redbirds. And they'll use their full timeout here. Now, let's 110 see, to go. Now, let's see if Frank Hay has a play against the zone where he can get himself a quick three and they can get back into their press. Coming up next, it'll be the championship game of the 8th Annual, Hawaiian Airlines, Diamond Head, Classic, San Diego State, and USF will play for the championship. And for San Diego State, Zylan Cheatham is a player to keep an eye on. Well, he's a guy right now that's probably the leader for the player of the tournament right now. Extremely aggressive. I'll tell you what, Roxy, I haven't seen many guys that has a motor like this guy has right now. Whatever battery he's using, go out and buy it, because I'll tell you what, high energy right now from this guy. There's numbers for the tournament. Long athletic, quick San Diego State team that shot the three well in their win against Tulsa. Against a team that shoots the three almost as well as anybody in college basketball is the University of San Francisco Dons, you know, they make over 11 threes per game, and they tied a tournament record with 16 against Utah on Thursday, and the three-pointer essentially has been the equalizer for them and has them in the championship. And, and Roxy, it's not like you're just telling your guys, guard the three-point line. It's how they get three-point shots off of ball screen action. It collapses your defense. They get them in transition, and they get them once they get the ball off the dribble drive into the lane. They're a tough out. They're going to be a tough out in the WCC also with Gonzaga and St. Mary's and BYU. Wheeler, long three. And it goes out of bounds. It was way short. Final minute. And a foul on Burke. His fourth, and it's Paris Lee back to the line. So a game where Illinois State has led by double figures for just about the entire ball game. As the Redbirds, Dino, they raced out to a 16-0 lead to start the game, leading by as many as 21. Tulsa got within 10. And this guy at the free throw line, despite the miss right there, has been outstanding. Actually, they got it down to nine. But it's been a double-figure lead for the majority of the contest. And you know what, Roxy? When you have a point guard like this and you see pressure, as a coach, you feel so much better. Just get the ball in his hands. He's going to handle it. And like any, you know, skill set isn't all you have as a point guard. It's your decision-making. He's made great decisions today. 109 career starts and counting for Lee. I don't know what his future is as far as the next level goes, Dino. But I know at this level... You got him on your side, you probably win in 20 games I, I, every I'm year. I'm telling you, it, 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 at any level, I, I, you know, I coached in the ACC for nine years. I'd be happy to have that guy as my point guard as well. Illinois State trying to put the finishing touches and go home with third place in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic and get to eight and four and go home at two and one in this tournament and get ready for Missouri Valley play while Tulsa will fall to 6-6 six and six as Tony Wills with a shot clock winding down just throws up a shot from near midcourt. And they open up American Conference play against UConn on New Year's Eve. 68-56. Here is Henderson with a long three. One last shot for Carita. 
That's the ball game in a 12-point win for Illinois State, led by 18 from Paris Lee and 16 from Deontay Hawkins. Sports Center coming up next, and we'll see you in just under a half hour with a championship game, San Diego State and San Francisco. For Dino Gaudio and our great crew, I'm Roxy Bernstein. Meli Kaliki Maka, we'll see you shortly.